to the book of Romans chapter 8. I'm going to be reading a very lengthy verse of the scripture starting from verse 18 to verse 30. Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 to verse 30. And I will read from the NIV version of the Bible. NIV. Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. 21. That the creation itself may be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who are the fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. I ask my sweetheart to please pray for the word we want to hear now. Amen. Here you speak to us, your word, your son is before you, we ask the Lord you wear him as an instrument. Pass through him, O oh God, and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. This morning, I want to talk on what I have titled, More Than a Conqueror, in bracket, The Blessing of Being a Child of God, Part 1. More than a conqueror. In bracket, the blessing of being a child of God. Part 1. Of course, the word more than a conqueror connotes that there are battles who have won as a result of the fight. But before we look into the conqueror in details, we want to look at in becoming a child of God, God that's what qualifies us to be more than a conqueror. What are the things we stand to benefit? And what are the things that are expected of us as his children? What are the things we stand to gain for being his children? When we talk about the blessings of the children of God, many a times we go into the financial things or the physical things that people could see. But the blessings of the children of God are far more than what eyes could see. Far more than what eyes could see. I divided this message into four parts i pray i will have enough time to handle what i have a the glory to be revealed in us anyone that is outside god has no glory to show because sin has no attraction sin has no attraction like on many occasions i have said here how many arm robbers have you seen with carry a microphone and say, brother, I want to thank the Lord because I'm an arm robber. Nobody will do that. How many fornicators will you ever see that will come to church and pick a microphone and say, beloved, help me thank the Lord. I am a fornicator. No! Nobody will ever do that. Why? Because such a thing does not carry glory. But every child of God who has a 
deliver from captivity there is glory and this glory is why God has separated us from sin so that we will reveal this glory and I pray for you may this glory show up in your life verse 18 we read said I consider that our present suffering are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed and of course, if you want to paraphrase this portion of the scripture, or you want to theologize it, we're talking about the end time enjoyment we will have when this life has ended. The glory we will start to gain and be part of in his kingdom. And so what our mind is trying to, Paul is trying to let us know, is that no matter what we are going through now, no matter the place we are going through now, it cannot be compared. And I will give you a little illustration. There is a man called Lazarus in the scriptures. While he was physically alive, he was a very poor, sick man. A homeless man. A man that had no companion. A man that all his relations and relatives have abandoned and turned their back at. But this man kept serving God. This man kept his faith in God. This man, even though he was suffering, he knew that the suffering was but a temporary suffering. It will not last forever. And why he died? The glory that he could not physically enjoy here on earth was unveiled. That even the man who was living very sumptuously saw the glory and screamed and shouted, Ah, ah, okay, Abraham, now me supposed to enjoy him. Maybe last us. Can I say this to you? That even though he does not look at TV, it is the essence of our work with him is to go through the challenges of life. Why? Because even though the challenges are there, they will not last forever. Amen. I say, Amen. amen. The present suffering cannot in any way be compared to his glory. What are these blessings? Number two. The whole world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Verse 19, the scripture said, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God. And that is why, for a child of God to live below standard, for a child of God, not to manifest the glory of God in his life, make so many others groan because if you as a child of God cannot manifest the glory they themselves who are not children of God begin to wonder what then will be their portion there are eager expectations let me even stop to let me come into the physical realm many of us are from homes where expectations are on high gear Many of them are expecting us to come out and be the deliverer in our homes. There are many of us from families where no arrow hair is seen. And now that we have claimed to be children of God, they are great high expectations. And that is why even when you are in Lagos, when they call you on phone and you say you don't have, they don't believe you. Why? Because what they are expecting of you is not what you are telling them. So what they're telling them. Why they have that expectation is because they know that there is a level of glory in your life that is supposed to manifest. I pray for you this morning. Whatever I've not allowed you to be what you should be, I remove it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The creations are waiting. The world is waiting. May you not disappoint your world. May I not disappoint my world. And let me say this. There are people that will not rise until you rise. Until you have that understanding. Then you need to live your life knowing fully well that there are generations behind you. If you don't rise, the destinies of those ones will not sign. I pray again for you. May grace be delivered to you. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 13, 1 Peter 3 verse 13, the scripture says, Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Who? If the Lord is raising you, and at the back of your mind, the Lord knows that those behind you,
behind you, you will take care of them. No devil will stop you. You know why? God, knowing fully well that destiny is attached to your destiny, He will protect and preserve you. He will protect and preserve you. And that's why someone like me has never been afraid of anything in life. I'm very conscious. Sometimes when I go home, my mother will be screaming and shouting. I will tell her, don't trouble yourself. I am far above principalities and powers. I sit in high places. Why? Because I have an understanding. If I am doing good, and what I am doing is good, no man can harm me. It's only if I'm doing it for purpose of aggravation, purpose of celebration, purpose of recognition, purpose of being worshipped. Allow me to use that word. That is where God will turn his back. But if I'm doing it from the depth of my heart, and that's what this scripture I've tried to say. If we are pursuers of good, no one. And let me say this very quickly. If I say this is why many have not actually been lifted, it is because when God assesses their life, God Himself is afraid that if this man rises, He will not take care of the people who have died to Him. And there are so many selfish Christians. They all think about themselves and themselves alone. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7. Proverbs 16 7. Very beautiful verse of the scripture. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, He causes their enemy to make peace with them. The King James Bible says, "The ways of a man pleases the Lord; He maketh his enemy to be a friend with him." So, if your work with God is where it should be, your enemies will have no option. The scripture went ahead to tell us in verse 20 for the creation was subject to frustration not by its own choice but by the will of one who subjected it that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage to decay and brought to freedom and glory of the children of God verse 22 we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the place of time but right up to this present why? because even ourselves we are eagerly waiting with perseverance for this hope. If there's any reason I have been praying the way I'm praying, is that if God blesses you, it is not just you alone that will enjoy it. Everyone around you will enjoy it and the church will be part of it. If you are not blessed, the people around you will be frustrated. Even you yourself will be frustrated. And out of frustration, you may not be able to please the Lord as much as you can. That is why this scripture says, even we, we are eagerly waiting for your manifestation. I am glad because I am your pastor in this time. And I'm glad because most of the things I have said to you, you have seen it in my life. I stand on this altar and I speak concerning you today. Every glory that needs to show up in your life, may God deliver it to you. Everything you have hoped for for this number of years that have lingered, I stand on this same altar and I decree today, bigger than you expect, may they manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. We are eagerly waiting. We are waiting. We are waiting for the glory to be unveiled, for the glory to be revealed. Why? Because they take the expectations of all creation. Imagine a man who lives in one room now and earns a 50,000 naira salary and gets a job tomorrow and earns a 500,000 naira salary. Will you remain in one room? The children who squeeze themselves under the bed like I used to squeeze myself in those days, they will not have a room to themselves. They have the comfort they desire in their personal rooms. And the containers of these children will brighten up. Why? Because the glory of their father has shown up. I pray for you. May your children be glad to have you as their parents. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, the scripture says, Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, and the evidence of things not seen. If that is true, then the things we see, we should not trouble ourselves about them. But the things we don't see should be our desires. That is the level I am today. I should no longer talk myself about them, but I should have an aspiration of a better and a bigger level. Because if God can bring me to where he has brought me today, he can take me to a better place.
Parce que c'est fait, c'est de sorte à sortir au fond. And the evidence of the unseen realities. There is law. The glory of the child of God is to manifest God in diverse dimensions. You cannot be more than a conqueror. If you are not understood, what God has made you a new generation and live by it. And live by it. I am believing God for you. The quicker than you, your dreams, God will give you an answer. Quicker than your expectation, God will put a smile on you. Oh, you will no longer struggle as long as you are before. Angels will put this in place for you and allow this glory to show up quickly in Jesus' name. Be the help of the Holy Spirit. The help of the Holy Spirit. You are a child of God until you have the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So until you have the Holy Spirit, don't celebrate too much. Your celebration is still very partial. Why? Jesus describing the Holy Spirit in the book of John. He said, He is the teacher, He is the director, He is the guide. Imagine when you have this thing operating in your life. You can never be stranded. Imagine having these three operational in your life. You can't be frustrated. When there are issues, you can just walk up to him. Sweet Holy Spirit, what is the way out? I say if you claim to be a child of God, and you don't have the Holy Spirit yet, oh, don't celebrate too much. One of the things you should anxiously pray about is to have the Holy Spirit in your life. That's one thing you should eagerly Oh, thank God you are here. He has brought you. But there is one more thing you should pray for. Lord, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. You know why? The Holy Spirit is the greatest helper I've ever seen in life. He's the greatest helper. He has given men ideas that made them rule their world. He has opened the eyes of men to see what they never bargained for. And they ended up becoming celebrators. When you have the Holy Spirit, wow. Your life can never remain the same. You know why? At every point, at every point, he will always tell you what to do. Oh, let me pity those of you who have him. And all you have him is only to speak in tongues. <laughs> You're a baby. You're a baby. The Holy Spirit is much more than just speaking in tongues. Psalm 19, verse 2, day unto day, utter speech, and night unto night, she will knowledge. The Holy Spirit speaks. But he will only speak to those that are tuned to him. If you are not tuned to him, you can't hear him. And like I used to give you the social, we are all seated here now. Apart from probably those of us who are using our devices, the TV stations are not, are not working. They are working, but we are not hearing them. The radio stations are not working. They are working, but we are not hearing them. Why? Because we are not tuned to them. The same way, until you are tuned to the Holy Spirit, you don't get his services. He's the greatest teacher. Benin calling my greatest partner. Oh, when you have the Holy Spirit, you have the help of God in your life. Even if you are going through pain, with the assurance of the Holy Spirit, you can always have some confidence that it will not continue. It will not continue. I hold not the wrong, but the wrong. Me. Oh, the Lord is me. Oh, God, I want to hear the voice of my people. Oh, I am not the rock, but the rock calls me. I am resting on. Uh, 
this little organization come. Uh, Obang Junior, come. Bring that boy. Come. Please raise your head. My leg, Kabo. Cameraman, just a uh, hand. Thank you. Between this boy holding my hand and me holding his hand, which one will be more firmer? This is the way you help me. If I want to hold him, I can hold him like this. And if I hold him like this, nothing can ever make him fall away. Now listen to this. When you have the Holy Spirit and you surrender your life to him, and you allow him to hold you like this, you are confident of your work with him. Remember I told you so many years ago, before I entered into the ministry, while I was arguing and quarreling, God, why are you asking me to do this assignment? In one of the nights, he decided to unveil himself. And he held me in the hand like this. And when we were going, he said to me, a boy whose father is holding his hand, does he fear anything? I said, no. And I woke up. One of the things that can ever make you a more than a conqueror is if he's the one holding you. If he holds you, you are sure. You are sure. Let the devil throw the challenges at you because he's the one holding you. You are firm, no shaking. Let the devil throw everything he can at you for the fact that he's the one holding you. Mm. But if you are the one holding him, oh. Your hand is too small to hold his hand. Your hand is too small. And I have temptation that may come your way. When they come, your hand will slip off. But if he holds you, I hold no that wrong, that wrong. Oh, sweet, oh, 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 sweet, oh, that oh, sweet. I hold no that wrong, And that is why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the lost people. Always pray. There are no special time to pray in the Holy Spirit. You can pray in the Holy Spirit at every time. While you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are submitting yourself to Him carrying you in the days of your weakness. He knows you. He knows me. Dear beloved, I plead with you, especially if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Spend time to pray in the Spirit. God enjoys it when you pray in the Spirit. Because Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that you are communicating with God when you pray in the Spirit. You are communicating. The human language is so polluted and adulterated that sometimes what you have in your mind, because you don't know how to express it, you will just say it anyhow. But when you pray in the Spirit, He helps you to package it. Oh, whatever way the Holy Spirit helps us, that He intercedes for us when we pray. Because you don't know what to pray for. In that sense. When you are before him and you are asking for help and you are lambasting in tongues and praying, all of a sudden, he that knows their heart will take it over from there. And first John chapter 5, verse 14, the scriptures say, First John 5 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything, and one of the ways to please God is to pray in tongues. To pray in tongues. Hmm. I read again verse 28 to 30. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those 
who love him. Can you please go to King James Media? Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. King James. Let me pick it up from the way. Now, and we know that all this work together for good to them that love God. Please raise your head. Many times when I come across some of these statements in the scriptures, I ask questions. The Bible says all things work together for good. To those that are what? To hear this. For the fact that you love God is why trouble should come your way. Amen, somebody. Amen. For the fact that you love God, that is why trouble should come. If trouble don't come your way, it means you have not loved him enough. It means you have not loved him enough. But for the fact that you love him, ah, program yourself. Let me say this, if, I'm not, if you didn't experience it, maybe because of the level of man's work with God. When I repeated newly, I had it very smooth. Had it very smooth. I'll pray. Bam. Answer come. Bam. Answer come. Bam. Answer come. When God felt I have my church. That is God's answer. When he felt I have my church. When I pray. Answer will not come like he used to come. Instead of answer coming, trouble will come. When it happened the first time, it happened the second time. I went back to God. I said, is there anything I'm doing wrong? And I remember, I just recounted, I, I, as I gave my love to you, I just said this you gave me yesterday. I said this time, why this one? God kept quiet. Why? This is my assumption. Maybe why God kept quiet? Was to see if I would still love him. Not that the people who are serving God because of what they will get. If anyone they are getting stopped, they stop. There are some who have come to serve God as a result of the trouble they have already in their lives. And why they are here is to get solution. If they get a solution, they walk away. These two group of people are not the kind of people God is looking for. God is looking for those that will serve Him because they love Him. Whether trouble comes or not, you are serving Him because you love Him. Whether challenges come or not, you are serving Him because you love Him. You know, I said I was wondering about this man called Lazarus. The Bible said that God will come and lick His wound. And yet, he will be telling the rich man, you better accept God though. And this man will look at you, you are telling me I accept God, how do you look like? But Lazarus kept his worship. Let me ask you this profound question. Are you here this morning because you are looking for something in the hand of the Lord? Like a man who goes to a native doctor to get an answer. Are you here to get a solution to your problem and when the solution comes, you run away. You disappear. If that is the reason, then you are in the wrong place. But if you serve him for who he is, he will allow you to enjoy him in fullness. All this, that is when you have chicken on top of your rice, and when you have granite on top of your gari, he is still God. <laughs> in this little life, I've had some little experience. There was a time that we used to buy Take my fish, you know, uh, this uh, bad agri people, they smoke fish. Mr. Nele, we would put the fish inside the mouth and chew it and use our saliva to cook the soup. And the gari, when we would put for water, normal gari, we put them inside the water because we don't know the tobacco is in. So we put them inside water, leave them there, the things swell, dry, become ever. And then you use your hand and cut it. After you have cooked your soup in your, with your saliva, you swallow the gari and. And we still come out. <laughs> you know, your tummy will not tell anybody what you have eaten until you talk up. <laughs> there is a and yet I will still come to the choir. He cares for me everywhere I go. Oh, what a friend lies on I just cook soup with saliva and swallowed it and came out sweating like a man who had eaten from. Sharatin. But God still remain God. He still remain. And it will always be. Whatever you may be going through now, just 
believe that God is the reason why it happened. It is because you love him. You know, the scripture said it is he that the father loves and that he chastises it. If he does not love you, he does not chastise you. So by implication that if when you are going through difficulties and challenges, it is because you love him. It is because you love him. All this work together for good. One thing I understand again by this aspect of the scripture is that no matter what happens to you, we'll summarize it with good. That is my understanding. That is my understanding. So for those who love God, all things. Let me add Second Timothy chapter one verse nine. I'll soon be summarizing. I'll look at my time. Second Timothy one verse nine. He has saved us and told us to a life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. This was given to us before the beginning of time. He called us, called us to face challenges and difficulties. Deliberately to see, permit me to digress a little bit. Why God placed a commandment in the Garden of Eden for Adam and Eve was for Adam and Eve to serve Him willingly, not under compulsion. What would He have taken, caused God to remove the tree from the garden? Or leave the tree with every other tree in the garden? It would have cost Him nothing. But not like my assumption, man would have any way to become a remote. Pem, you will wake up. Pem, you will pray. Pem, you will come to church. Pem, you will sing. Pem, you will worship. Pem, you will go home. Pem, you will eat rice. Pem, you will remove clothes. Pem, you will sleep. Pem, you will wake up. Pem, you will watch television. Pem, you will laugh. Pem, you will cry. That is what man would have ended up. But no, God made man and God gave him choice. But I'm happy that even though God gave man choice, the choice God gave man made man stray away. But the grace of Jesus now treats us back. Now that He has brought us back, what He is expecting is that no matter the challenges that come your way, you should still stand by Him. Don't behave like Adam. Don't behave like Him. All things work together for good. Why? To fulfill the ultimate purpose of God in our lives. Ultimate purpose. If things didn't happen the way they happened, would you be who you are? If God did not allow things to happen the way they have happened, will you still serve Him? He loves me, I cannot say why. He loves me, I, I cannot, cannot say why. why. I on God, we Jesus, Jesus and me. Oh, he loves me, I cannot say I cannot say why. My father died. I just finished secondary school. And with all the promises of going to the university, immediately I was through with my school. If I was able to pass, that was his condition. When he was giving me the 120 naira to register my wife, he was telling me, I'm not through this morning, I went to the river. But if you pass, I will send you to school. When my results came out, my father looked at my results, my father was crying. As foolish as I was as a boy, I was asking, Why are you crying? You said I should pass, I have passed. Why are you crying? Are you not sending me to school again? My father shake his head. He was a dying man. He was sick. But I didn't look beyond my selfish desires. I was only interested. Even though you are sick, that's not my business. So I want to go to school. Two months down 
ran the land, the man died. Hey, I remember the night I got home to see his corpse. I went, I went. All I was meeting for was that I was not going to school again. Not because my papa died. The reason behind my cry it was just simple. Nobody to send me to school again. And through through, that was it. All the people that made all the whole promises of heaven and earth, all of them failed and disappointed. But one thing I was glad that God did not allow me to backslide. He said, help me. Our things work together for his purpose. He helped me in those years of challenges, in those years of abandonment, in those years of neglect. He helped me. He helped me. I had an opportunity of sleeping in school because of no accommodation. I had an opportunity of putting benches together as my bed because of no accommodation. I had an opportunity of going to a church for all night because of no place to sleep. But yet, he loves me. I cannot tell her. He loves me. I cannot tell her. person to go through it and you will likely not be the last person to go through it men have gone through challenges all things work together for his good that we may fulfill his perfect purposes in our lives what is it you are going through don't allow the challenges you are experiencing make you say the things you are not supposed to say make you do the things you are not supposed to do don't allow the experiences you are going through make you walk away from God if you do he remains God you are the loser don't allow it. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. All things work together for good. In 1996, I had an accident. An accident that was supposed to take my life. Take the life of my friend. Take the life of 14 passengers in the bus. I will not forget it. It was in August. But somehow, miraculously and mysteriously, God delivered us. God delivered us. We woke up and to discover that everybody was alive with minor, minor injuries. And I remember saying to God, far away where I was going, if you return me back, I will serve you. I never knew how he saved us. The man I would have killed was walking under the vehicle I hit. The man saw a vehicle coming on two tires. The man ran away. If the man had remained there, he would have been a dead man. What would have happened if he was not looking? If he had kept busy doing what he was doing? And it made him unexpectedly. What would have happened? But somehow, somehow, God had expected it. He looked at and he saw I was coming with speed, but on two tires. In a split second, as the guy jumped out of the vehicle, our vehicle landed on his own vehicle. But yet, he still kept me going. Pains are part of life. If you don't feel the pain of life, then you are not existing. Pains are part of life. Until you understand it, you may not enjoy life. Pain are part of life. If they are not there, God will not be valuable to you. Shall we stand on our feet? Shall we stand on our feet? Mali Masukaya. We are more than a conqueror. But these are the places we stand to go. First mm. Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. A called out people. To show for the praise of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Beloved, there is a reason why God has allowed you. There are reasons. Me to makangi chinoke. Me to makangi. 
coming to unbearable and you need help you need help from the holy spirit please can you just come to the altar and let's join our faith together you need help you need help please come please come please come Please lift up your voice to heaven and let him know the yearnings of your heart. Lift up your voice to heaven and let him know the desires in your heart. We are more than conqueror. We are more. We are more. We are more. But we need his grace. We need his grace. We need his grace. We need his help. Ah, male masuka eka etoli. My Italy, 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 Italy,